So this is McCarthy for Feed Your Nerd. We're at Awesome Con, and we're with Mr. Ben Templesmith here, man of many arts. The camera is like a police vehicle. Police vehicle? D nice don't worry, red. don't worry. We're, we're not going to frisk you. But I like shiny things. <laughs> you like shiny things? I'm from Australia. We like well, shiny things. there you go. Things. So this is your uh, second Awesome Con, correct? You well, were here yes, last year? Yes, it is my second Awesome Con, and it is also awesome. It, how, how much of a difference do you notice from the first one to this one? Uh, it's bigger. It's downstairs now, so you get shitty phone reception. <laughs> Sorry for my French, I'm Australian. That's fine. With uh, you know the Dagon book coming out, you know obviously one of Lovecraft's great stories. Um, I did a little research, and compared to your Squitter Kickstarter, this one there was actually only 16 uh, backers different between the two projects. Um, a bit more, you mean? Uh, only 16 more for the uh, Lovecraft one. Did Did you expect? more of a draw for that one because of his work or did you expect more or less just your your normal fans to check I don't expect out? anything that's why you when you do a Kickstarter uh, to use the phrase you're basically you're putting your dick in the wind uh, and seeing who slaps it <laughs> um, and I've been very lucky to have a critical mass of people that want to see a book that I do so um, I did actually it did better than the Squitter Kickstarter um, but I do have that critical mass of fans, of a, few, a bit over a thousand, yeah. that will buy a fancy thing I do. And that's the, I want to make fancy things, so it blew away my expectations. Um, but I didn't have expectations. Okay. I try not to have them, or assumptions. If it works out, it works out. Yeah, that's why you ask for as little as possible that you can get away with to, to make it yourself if you had to. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, you don't want to, I don't do the pie in the sky stuff, so I'm like, I need a million dollars to do something because like you're not going to get that yeah but if you get a fraction of what you need and then the other people just it's a pre-order system it is a genius pre-order system if you have an established audience and it's a great way to get something from the ground floor up and not have to have it financed by dudes in suits who are not creative and want to change what you normally do yeah. um, they don't yeah. understand what you're trying to accomplish no. and, and honestly it's a it's very separate thing from the direct market uh, sales wise I, I've noticed and you can make you can pay your rent and, and feed your cats uh, if you sell 500 copies on a Kickstarter versus making maybe five to 15,000 copies in the, the direct market, which is an economy of scale. Right. So Kickstarter is fantastic for empowering artists Excellent. Um, and letting us do the books we want to do. I recommend it. With, um, you know, with the Dagon book, I remember seeing that it was you know, the anniversary for it. Um, did, did you feel that it was... It was the anniversary of his birth, I think. It was yeah. 150 years to, to this year. So. Did, did you feel that this was just the right time in your career to do something like that? Or was it something that you always wanted to do from the well, get-go? For various reasons, we had to do a Kickstarter, uh, a project, that I didn't want it to be... I mean, The Squitter turned out to be a massive book, um, over 100 and, 144 pages. So I did actually do forty, like around 40 extra story pages oh, wow. than I e even planned. So, and that's why it took a bit longer too. This project is a bit smaller in scope, so it's actually only... 40 story sequential page because it's Dagon's only a short story it's like three pages of prose so right. I'm letting it breathe and I'm giving it mood and atmosphere the way I wanted to do it but it's still a relatively smaller project but we're going to fill the rest of the book with uh, process back matter extra other artists and all sorts of extra mm. stuff so it's still going to be a thick book but it's actually less I mean the Squitter took nine months of my life fully uh, working on it this book will take like three months four months so to do it right so I'm very happy with that. It's smaller, but it actually did even better. So yeah, no. I don't look at the back end number. I mean, ultimately, it's the number of copies you sell that, that helps. But you don't need to sell many. Um, as long as you hit your target and then, yeah, you can afford to do it. It's great. Cool. So I forgot the initial question for that, so I was just <laughs> rambling anyway. Oh, no, that, that was, uh, did, did you always want to do an, an homage to one of your influences? Or was this something where just recently you're like, you know, I'm in a good point in my career where... Well, I've always loved Dagon, like but uh, I've always loved Dagon as yeah. um, a story. I'm not familiar with every Lovecraft story. I'm not like a huge Lovecraft buff. I am familiar with him, and I'm a huge fan of uh, the tone he set. And mm -hmm. he has had such an effect on everyone else that's ever followed. He created a mythos that everyone else has riffed on right. and I've been riffing for years on people that he, he was influ uh, influenced by him so I'm just going to the source material and it's like, it was a nice fun smaller project to yeah. try and do and like wanted to do my way when I read the story it's begging to be turned into a comic it's right. a narrative so like you can have the captions and it just begs with the with the visuals so Cool. I'm fun. It was fun. I get to do some sea creature tentacle stuff. So something that you never do. No, I mean that's what I love to do anyway. So. 
And I was doing that stuff before it got more popular as well. Yeah, yeah. Original so you know. OG. <laughs> yeah, I'm an OG <laughs> tentacle guy. Last question I had was with Lovecraft, you know, great stories, but also controversial with his views. Um, we had talked a little bit before. Yeah, but was he controversial with his views? What's that? Was he controversial with his views? Uh, for his time. For his time. For his time, he was kind of like, oh, yeah. Let's be racist and bigots and all the sort of yeah. Like so for then, but for now, yeah. And he was relatively vocal in his letters, I guess, and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, everyone's allowed to have an opinion. That's the beauty of free speech, and you don't have to agree with it. And you can choose to consume or not consume someone's creative work based on them as a human being. My rule with that is, you can be a horrible human being, and I might love your work, like Clint Eastwood. I love me a Clint Eastwood film. Not so in love with him talking to chairs. Yeah. But I you know, forgive that. But, although he did actually go to the Republican convention, did that? Yeah. But you get, you get a situation like, I'm pretty liberal in my views and I, I don't hold back. And uh, I'm very passionate about helping people or the way I, I see to help people. Um, and if you don't want to buy my work because of that, then that's fine. Um, I, I, get a, I get by okay and that's fine. And I'm prepared to be myself and be authentic, right? And I don't think I'm a mean person and a nasty person. But then you get guys like Orson Scott Card. To use an example, um, okay, so he had controversy with his with his work because he's quite anti-gay, I guess, or, yeah. or whatnot. Um, but he actually worked with an organization to try and stop something or make something happen, whatever that was, um, which is like being a little more proactive than just giving an opinion. Right. So that, I would choose not to support someone if I disagreed with their point on that and they were actively working towards like donating lots of money, going to government, and all the other stuff to actually make something I disagreed with happen. It's like, well, I'm not going to support him on that. Right. So that's my cutoff line. Yeah. And you can be your own private citizen and voice your own opinion, and, and I'll just consume your work if I like it. But that would might be my red line. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, totally. So Lovecraft never did like, I, so far as I know, he's just Do coalition. He was just a vocal right. douchebag yeah. in some <laughs> aspects. But in his time, that was socially acceptable, really. Yeah. Anyway, well, yeah. so, more than now. But we're holding. When we hold people from the history to today's standards, I mean, you're allowed to because we, we know who we are now, but you need to be more aware that not everything was like it is now. And right. when, you ha when you realize that, you have an appreciation for where we are now and what the fight was and where we still need to go. Not many people know history terribly well, so, yeah. or, and the attitudes of the past. They just, they're, not, they're unaware. Yeah. They think now is like it always was, but like, no, you've got to fight for what you believe. So, yeah. he was, you know, he can do what he says and, you know, I mean, it's, it's slightly different if, if the bigotries that you may have flow through into the work. Well, right. then I may not like the work because I'm not, a, I'm not kind of agreeing that slavery is cool anymore, you know? <laughs> so if you actually put that in your book, that slavery is cool, not good. Yeah. It's like the whole feminism thing like now. I don't think anyone's pro-rape or anything, even if they're using it in a book, and I know there's controversy about that now, but it's usually for a point. If you can put horrible things in a work, but it's not endorsing it just because it's in there. You right. know, it, it might be trying to tell you this is a bad thing. And it might yeah. be trying to communicate something about something horrible, yeah. like Schindler's List. It's like, yeah. If you don't talk about something, it'll never get resolved. Yeah, but I mean, and dramatic, horrible events are always great fodder for stories, no matter yeah. what they are. I mean, yeah. even if they're brutal, they have a point. And, and a Holocaust film always has a point, which yeah. is not to be pro-Holocaust. Yeah, um, you know. <laughs> I would assume, <laughs> even in Germany now. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big wide world and everyone has their piece and their say and like, yeah. let, you know, let people have freedom of speech. And if you don't like something, vote with your dollar yeah. and your opinion, but do, do uh, let think, people do what they want. Do you think um, fans of work, do you, do you think that's something that they, they should check out the artist's background before they vote with their dollar? Well, no, because it's about, when an artist, a creative person creates something, that's not them, that's a separate animal. And I, when I do a piece of art, I always call it my baby. Right. Because it's me, but it's not me. I've set it out into the world, and it is what it is. And I can't control what meaning it may have for other people. I know what meaning I might have put in it, but... No, I don't think you need to vet every single person just, just to either like or dislike their work. appreciate something that they do. I mean, um, an artist or an actor even, and their work are two very separate things. Like, you can have a, a great actor, but he might be a total shitbag in person. And I might hate him as a human being, but I love his acting. So right. as long as they're not pushing for shit that I'm totally against, then that's fine. You're buying a book of mine, you're not buying me. 
Yeah. You can buy me, but I'm a bit more expensive. <laughs> Just a little bit. And my wife might have a problem with that. <laughs> this is uh, McCarthy with Feed Your Nerd with Mr. Ben Templesmith. Once again, thank you again. Thank you. And, and look, look for Dagon in like September or so, maybe earlier, but uh, I'm half finished with Dagon now. The Kickstarter will be updated soon. Uh, thank you everyone who backed it, and you will be able to buy it um, elsewhere once we have published the book on my website, 78squid.com, and other places, 44 Flood. Oh, actually, uh, blah, 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 that. promote, promote. <laughs> Is that going to stay as one solid piece, or did you have plans to split it up as issues? No, like it will stay. Because of the nature of the size of the work, it, it's gonna, I'm going to keep it as one solid piece for now. Mm. Uh, if I do a couple more Dagon stories, I might actually want to compile it into one you know, tome, right? Because um, then you'd have enough of a story for, right. to warrant that. But otherwise, it's like its own unique little project right now. I think cool. it's just not. It's it's like in between being too small and too big. It's a medium-sized medium. thing to repackage anyway for like IDW or anything. So you'll only get it from us for a very long time. Yeah. Wow. I felt like a wrestler thing. <laughs> Killer promos here at the Templesmith table. Watch out. He's coming for you. Dagon coming out in the fall. Buy it.